Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a lesson on exponential functions in a nutshell. And what I plan to do in this video is give you a brief overview of different aspects of exponential functions. The first thing we're going to do is answer a question, what is an exponential function? Well, an exponential function is a function in which the variable is in the position of the exponent. An example that I've provided is e to the x is equal to negative 2300 times 3.5 to the x plus 1000. And what I'd like you to notice is the position of that variable. The variable x is in the position of the exponent. That's what makes this an exponential function. Now the general template of an exponential function is as follows. e to the x equals a times b to the x minus h plus k. So virtually all exponential functions will subscribe to this template more or less. Now again, I'd like you to note that the variable x is in the position of the exponent, but something else that I'd like you to now focus on is the base b. The base b is very important because it reveals whether the graph is going to exhibit what's called exponential growth or exponential decay, which we're going to explore on the next slide. But for this page, for this slide, I want you to know that there are two restrictions on this base b. b can never be negative. So we're going to say that b must be greater than 0. And also, b cannot equal 1. So whenever you have an exponential function, this number down here, which serves as the base of the exponent, it'll never be negative, and it, uh, it will never be 1. Otherwise, it's no longer considered an exponential function. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so now we're on slide two, and I've given you on the top of the slide the general template for any exponential function. And we're going to be looking at the two basic shapes that might result and their reflections. Now, I mentioned on the other slide that the two basic shapes we're going to see are, are for exponential growth and exponential decay. And on this slide, we're going to really figure out when to use one scenario versus the other. So let's just focus on this all-important base. If the base is some number bigger than 1, we're going to have what's called exponential growth. So I'm just going to write that over here. Now, conversely, if that base is a fraction between 0 and 1, we're going to have what's known as exponential decay. So that's going to be over here. Now, the other element that we're going to look at is the coefficient out in front. If that number, a, is greater than 0, that would mean that it's positive. And a positive a value means there's no reflection. Conversely, if a is less than 0, that would imply that it's negative and there is going to be a reflection, namely a vertical reflection, which, by the way, is a reflection over the x-axis. So let's go ahead and show you what each of these four outcomes are going to look like. Starting with the top left, we have exponential growth with no reflection. So that's going to look something like this. Now one observation that I'd like you to make is that when we start this graph over to the left, it exhibits what's known as asymptotic behavior. The graph approaches but never touches uh, y equals 0 or the x-axis. So this is the x-axis here, and this graph is never going to touch it. So I'm going to make, uh, to show that there's an asymptote there, I'm going to make some hash marks through the axis like this. So this has asymptotic behavior. Now, moving to the uh, top right, we're going to have the exponential decay graph. And again, there's no reflection because we're on the top of the chart. So I'm going to draw uh, an example of exponential decay. So this looks very different than exponential growth. It's sort of the, the opposite, actually. And once again, the x-axis is going to serve as an asymptote. So to show that, I'm going to put these hash marks down. Okay, so now we're on the bottom of the chart, and in the bottom of the chart, A is less than zero, which means A is something negative, which produces a reflection over the x-axis. So what I'm basically going to do is take the two graphs that are on the top, and I'm going to draw their mirror image over the x-axis. So both of them are still going to contain asymptotes, so I'm going to start with that. And now I'm going to draw their mirror images over the x-axis. So that's the reflected version of exponential growth. And now I'm going to draw the reflected version of exponential decay. Great. 
Now on the next slide we're going to talk a little bit about the role of K and how that's going to affect the appearance of these graphs. Okay, so we're on the third slide and on the top I've given you the general template for any exponential function and what we're going to focus on on this slide is the role of K. K serves as the horizontal asymptote. It's going to reveal to us the position of the horizontal asymptote. So if there was a plus 3 at the end, we would say that there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. And we'll denote horizontal asymptote by HA. So I'm just giving you an example, y equals 3. If this were a negative 7, we'd say HA at y equals negative 7. And if there's no number at the end at all, we would just say HA at y equals 0. So once again, this value k will shift the entire exponential growth or decay curve up or down depending on whether it's positive or negative. And this is sometimes known as a vertical translation. So what I've done for you is I've given you three different exponential curves. y sub 1 is 2 to the x plus 0, y sub 2 is 2 to the x plus 2, and y sub 3 is 2 to the x minus 4. So the first thing that I'd like you to observe is that in each of these, the base is 2. And because 2 is a number greater than 1, we expect to see exponential growth. So what I'm going to do is queue up the calculator so we can see. Now in the first case, the k value is 0, which means we're shifting the, the, the uh, growth curve up 0, which means an ha at y equals 0. In the second case, we have a plus 2 at the end, so k is 2, which means we're shifting the growth curve up 2, and we're, we have an ha at y equals 2. And in the third example, we, uh, we finish with a minus 4, so k is negative 4, which means the whole graph is shifted down 4, and we have an ha at negative 4. So let's take a look at the calculator just to confirm and really solidify our understanding of that. So I've queued the calculator up, I'm going to go to the y equals screen, and I'm going to put in 2 to the x, then one of them is going to be plus 0, and now we're going to do 2 to the x, and then plus 2, and then we'll finish with 2 to the x minus 4. So let's focus on these different horizontal asymptotes and how the growth curve is being shifted either up or down accordingly. So I'm going to go to the window and I'm going to go, let's say, negative uh, 6 to 6. And let's see what this looks like. So the first one should be the growth curve shifted up 0. And it's right along the x-axis. Now the next one is shifted up 2. You can see it's 2 units up. And then the third one is 4 units down. So here's the, the growth curve three times, shifted up zero, shifted up two, and then shifted down four units. This is the role of K, how the graph is shifted up or down. Okay, on this slide, I've again started with the general template for any exponential function, but this time we're going to be looking at the role of H. H will shift the graph either right or left, which is sometimes called a horizontal translation. So I've given you three different functions that we're going to look at on the graphing calculator. And the first thing that I'd like you to notice is that the base of each of these graphs is 2. Now 2 is a number that's bigger than 1, which means we're going to have exponential growth. And that gives you some sort of expectation as to what the graph is going to look like by assessing the fact that it's going to be growth. Now in the first example, we've got an x plus 2. Now this is going to shift the graph left 2 units. The second graph has an exponent of x plus 4, and this is going to shift the graph left 4 units. And the third example has an exponent of x minus 3, which shifts the graph to the right 3 units. So let's take a look at that on the calculator to confirm what we just said. So I'm going to start by entering y equals 2 raised to the x plus 2. The next one is 2 raised to the 
x plus 4. And the third one is 2 raised to the x minus 3. Now a quick note I want to make is that my calculator has an updated operating system, but you might have an older operating system. And it's important that if you're going to uh, write exponents that they are offset with parentheses. I didn't need to do that because the exponents are clearly in the position of an exponent, but if you have an older model of the calculator, you might need to offset your exponent with parentheses. So let's take a look at these graphs. The first one should be two to the left, and then four to the left, and then three to the right. So I'll just do a zoom six. So this one is two to the left. The next one's four to the left. And the last one is three to the right. Now, regretfully, I probably should have started by putting just the general two to the x function in, so we have some sort of uh, comparison. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two to the x in. This is our basic shape of exponential growth. And I'm gonna make it thicker. And I'm actually gonna graph this again. So we can see how these are relative to this basic shape. So here is the basic shape this thicker exponential growth curve. And then we have two to the left, and then we have four to the left, and then we have three to the right. So on this slide, we discussed the role of H, and the H will produce what's called a horizontal translation, which is a shift either to the right or to the left. 